So basically, whose idea was it to do a Cream tribute show? Whose idea in Mountain was it? Mine. And what was the thought process? Well, I mean, the whole reason uh, I play the guitar, really, is because of my love for Cream and Eric Clapton and Jack Bruce. And I did thought of that before we even heard that they were getting back together. We put a great DVD together and of Mountain, West Bruce and Lang and Felix and Cream to tie it all in. And then we, we show it and then we do about three or four Cream songs. Have you decided which ones you'll include in the set? Yeah. Uh, Sunshine Be Love, Politician, Born Under a Bad Sign, and Crossroads. Now this was tested, I guess, once at B.B. King's, and I understand it went over really well with the well, audience we, there. We've, we've done it around uh, 12 or 15 times since then. We went over across the country, and then we uh, went over to England for 10 shows. So we've done it already, and uh, I, I love it. Now, was the timing, did it have anything to do with Cream getting back together in London? No, I actually thought about doing it before they announced that. And as uh, strange as that may seem, but... It's worked out really well. Now, as someone who's enjoyed your music for the last 15 years, I think that Mountain sounds its best when it's at its leanest. One guitar, one drummer, one bass player. Was that also inspired by Cream? Well, Felix wanted an organ player in the group, so we didn't look like Cream. And, uh, you know, I was totally against it. And then finally we got rid of the organ. It worked on a few songs, but uh, I was much freer when we just played the three of us. And now, too. Have you had the opportunity to play with Clapton? No, I was in the studio with him three years ago when he was working on a um, Howlin' Wolf's guitar player. He uh, was doing an album, an old black guy. Um, Wilbert Sumlin. Hubert Wilbert Sumlin, Sumlin, sure. And uh, I met Eric there in the studio. I didn't get to play with him, but I met him for the first time. It's a big thrill. Quite frankly, the parallels in your career lately is interesting. You did a, 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 a terrific album that I know a lot of people enjoyed, and that was Blues to Die For. And do you think the flavor of your playing has changed over the years, as has Clapton's? I don't, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I was thrilled with that because uh, I got to play with Ainsley Dunbar, and it went to number six in the BBC blues stations in England. And I, have, I did another one that's coming out in about two months called Got Blues with more of the same. Um, I just never got to play real blues. So I'm really happy with the way it all came out. Why now? I, somebody gave me the opportunity. Mike Barney from Shrapnel asked me if I wanted to do it. And uh, I actually went over to Europe last year with Todd Wolf, who's Cheryl Crow's ex-guitar player. And the two of us did a tour by 22 shows, just two guitars, no drums, no bass, acoustic slide and electric. And then, I came back and uh, we were on tour and I got a call from Sharon Osbourne's office that Ozzy was doing this album called Souls I Wish I Wrote. And would I do Mississippi Queen with him? And I was out in L.A. and went to his house and did it. And then as soon as I finished that, I did the next blues album. So it's been three albums right in a row. And uh, it's all different, but I love playing, so why not? Now, you kind of you got ahead of me because I wanted to, to get to that, and that is the fact that here we are 30 years later, three decades later, and Mississippi Queen is a hit again. Did you ever Isn't think Did you ever think this song had, had this type of legs? Uh, probably, but the way we did it, Ozzy, uh, and the, I think uh, it gave it a whole new life, and it's a little a little bit different. We do it like that on stage now, Mountain. We do it like the version I did with Ozzy. So it's given it, you know, to me, uh, it's like a new song. And I think that's important to mention. A lot of people might not realize that that's you on there. Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I went out to his house and uh, Mark Hudson produced it. And uh, I'm thrilled. I was with him the other day in the city. And, you know, Black Sabbath's first tour was with Mountain in 69 and... We were talking about all the dates we did. I mean, it must have been 150 dates altogether, and he remembers uh, everything about most of all those dates. Well, I have to ask you, you know, he, he insinuated that you might have introduced him to some bad habits. 
Yeah, he said I introduced him to cocaine, and I told him that uh, it wasn't me. It was your road manager that gave it to me. So we had a couple of laughs, but he's sober and so am I, so it's, it's great. I want to remind people that the date to mark down is April 13th, the Helen Hayes Theater in Nyack. The website, by the way, is mountainthaband.com. It's got tour dates. It's got merchandise, band news. For instance, Mountain is going to be doing an album of Dylan covers. Is that true? Yeah, I, I got some idea in Belgium last year that I heard blowing in the wind and uh, it was a bootleg, I think, by Neil Young with a Celtic choir and strings. And I I did a great arrangement of it. Well, I'm not tooting my own horn, but I did a an acoustic t- into a heavy electric version of it that's uh, really exciting. And uh, on stage, I do the acoustic one, but... We did, I think, a uh, quarter of the album so far, and it uh, really sounds great. And you know, I was never into Dylan's voice, but boy, his, his lyrics were some. He's a poet. He's yeah. a poet, and, and you're a musician, and, and that's a good mix, because I believe it was over the summer, maybe in August, I caught a show uh, where you, you, you went through the song, and at the very beginning, some of the people in front of us were like, this is not what I wanted to hear out of Mountain. And by the end of Blown in the Wind... You, had oh, you heard that, huh? You had him. You had him by the end of the song. Yeah, I love that song. Let's talk and, also about some of the bootlegs that you've released. Uh, Fuel 2000, Eruption is a two-CD set, a couple of other bootlegs. Do they all have your stamp of approval? Yeah, well, uh, the Fuel 2000 one, that one it's not really a bootleg, but uh, they got a hold of the... Uh, the masters and I really was happy with the playing. So we licensed that. And then the ones from voice print, they, uh, said that, you know, when we were over in Europe, how many, I you can't believe how many bootlegs are out by mountain and me. So they gave us an opportunity to actually license it, endorse it and approve it. And, uh, it was a great way of keeping your eye on your stuff rather than people just ripping you off. Do you record each and every show? No. You ever have a night at the end that you say, you know, I wish I, I had that? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's been quite a few recently that I wish we did. No doubt about it. You guys are getting better at what you do. April 13th, Helen Hayes Theater. Tickets are on sale now, and there's so much more going on. For instance, the DVD See a Fire live concert, Nantucket Sleigh Ride, the book, and recently re-released just in time also to go along with the cream tribute uh i'd noticed west bruce and lang live and kicking which was really the culmination of your partnership with jack bruce back in the mid 70s that that was just recently re-released as well yeah somebody uh made a deal with sony and uh released and it's I, you know, i'm surprised at how many thousands of copies it sold already and uh, i just got it the other day and it sounded really good leslie west while we have you on the line what else is going on? What else do we need to know about? Uh, well, I'm, I'm engaged. Yeah, but that's been going on for a couple of years. Not really. We're, we're really serious about it now. and uh, But I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I'm uh, happy about playing. And uh, as long as I can do all these different things, it keeps me uh, on my toes. You keep it interesting, I guess, because, like you said, you you can't even count how many shows you've done over the years. I mean, just in the last couple of years, uh, the trips to Europe, I notice, have been more frequent. Any reason for that? Well, I guess, you know, in England, uh, Nantucket Sway Ride was a theme song for this TV show for 20 years called Weekend World, which is sort of like their version of 60 Minutes. And everybody knew Nantucket Sway Ride and... Uh, they know it more than Mississippi Queen or Theme for the Imaginary Western. So we've got a chance to go over there in Germany and Europe, and I love it in Europe. I love it here, but it's great to go over there. How are the venues compared to here? Very nice. The people are surprised at how uh, dedicated they are and how so into the songs, and they know, you know, they, and a lot of them come to every show. They get on planes and charter buses and come to every show, and they're always amazed that we, from night to night, the set changes. I don't even write a set down anymore. I just change it for myself and for the band. So it's uh, it's different than over here. How do you decide? I mean, how do you decide if, say, you're going to start with Blood of the Sun? Are you going to start with I Never have no idea. Life? I have no idea. 
now I start with uh, sometimes why I sing the blues from my blues album. Um, it, I, it just basically how my voice is feeling and how if I want to start off easy or start off hard or you know it's and it keeps me on my toes. Again, April 13th, it's the Helen Hayes Theater. Our friends from the Turning Point, we want everyone from the Turning Point who would normally show up at the Mountain Show to go over in Nyack to the Helen Hayes Theater, a short trip over the Tappan Zee Bridge. It's a good room, and I think uh, you'll enjoy playing in it. Why always on the left side of the stage? Is that a superstition? For me? Yeah. I'm so used to looking at the band over my right shoulder. 35 years on the road. Leslie West, thank you.